Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. And we thank you very, very much for joining us today. We are reading Revelation. And we are who, Caden? We are the people that believe in the law of and commands for all generations. That the name of Yahushua is our Messiah. That is the son of Elohim. Some know him as Jesus, but there are no J's in Hebrew. That is our Savior. Yep, and so here we are. We are in the book of Revelations. We are cruising through. Um, I don't know how many we actually have in Revelations. Um, 21. 21 chapters. And so here we are. And for those who uh, are family, we love you guys very, very much. Thank you guys very much for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Let us begin this right here. So this is Kazon 6. Let's see what it says. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, like a sound of thunder, come and see. All right, so we're dealing with the um, what I call the scary monsters or the scary creatures um, from Revelation, what was it, 4? I think that so. we had. Um, and so here they are, and so now they're talking. Um, remember, these were guys that said, holy, 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 day and night. And I, one of the questions I asked was, do you think that's all they say? Nope. Um, and, and no. So here they say, they also uh, said, come and see. Um, one of the four living creatures was saying, come and see. Two. And I looked and saw a white horse, and he who sat on it holding a bow. And a crown was given to him, and he went out overcoming and to overcome. Okay, so we have a white horse, and we also have the sizzling of the breakfast. Sorry, guys, about this. You just, you'll have to have breakfast with us. Can't do much about this. Sizzling sound. Okay, um, and it's getting real loud. Maybe I'll just hold on to this. Give me a second. All right, we're back. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, so we have a... Um, we have a white horse. The guy that sat on it is holding a bow. Um, and a crown was given him, and he went out overcoming and to overcome. What does that sound like to you guys? It sounds like Yahushua. I don't know. That one sounds like... I don't know what this guy is. Um, I, well, unless he makes... Unless he's like some sort of like fighter. Uh, well, this is holding a bow. So this yeah, is holding he's, a... He's a, a warrior. Yeah, a white thing. A crown was given to him. He went out overcoming and to overcome. Okay, so that could be Yahushua, but I mean, these are the four horsemen that we're talking about here. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. So now we have the second scary monster, and he's, he's saying something here as well. And another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was given to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that they should slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. So this guy causes people to kill each other. Yeah, and uh, I mean... So these horses are all things that you're probably not going to see physically. It's probably like, some like spirits. Yeah, the spiritual, spiritual horse or spiritual stuff that's, that's happening right now. And so the first horse went and he had a bow and he was messing with people. The second one, um, this guy is on a fiery red horse and um, he's taking peace from the earth. And so do we have peace on the earth right now? I'd say no. It's, no. I don't think there's ever been peace. There, there's Ever since, I guess, there's been wars from the very beginning of time all the way till there will be wars at the very end. And there will always be rumors of wars. There will always be all of this. And, you know, the, we, live in, we live with the North America, who is the military-industrial complex. And their entire job in the military-industrial complex is to create more wars and more weapons and more power and more military might and more strength and more things like that. There is no peace on the earth. And, you know, for I grew up in North America and we, we were under the assumption that we were give, going around the world giving everyone freedom. And then when you grow up and you learn and you see exactly what's going on and you see the casualties of war and you see this so-called freedom that you have been deploying upon the world, you see that you have left nothing but endless death, destruction and misery. And um, that is what comes with the force of the military might right you know you don't get into war and and you know obviously wars have to happen and things do happen but um as far as being peace on the earth i i don't know if we have peace on the earth right now or as have ever really had peace on the earth whatever peace we think we have is, is, is pseudo it's all fake okay five and when he opened the third seal i heard the third living creature say come and see and i looked and saw a black horse and he who sat on it holding a pair of scales 
in his hand. So I think this guy is judge is judge of the people. Measuring, and then yeah, the he, other... He judges that what their goodness and badness to see so, if it outweighs each other. So we have the first horse, the guy with the bow. Then we have the second one who takes away um, peace. Third one, um, he's he's like the hands of justice or the scales of justice or something yeah, of the sort. He, I think he's a judge basically weighing out the good and bad. Okay, six. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a measure of wheat for a denarius and three measures of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. All right, do you guys have what a denarius is? Oh, hold on. Yes. Give me a second. Um, how, exactly how much that is. Uh, and I don't know how much is a measure. What are they talking about measure? Is it a cup of wheat? I don't know what a measure, what they're talking about here. Um, in the Sefer, it says, and I heard in the midst of the four living creatures a measure of wheat for a dinar and three measures of barley for a denarius. We don't have denarius in the back. Okay, you guys don't have that. Um, I don't. I think what they're saying by this is it's very expensive is what this is. And I believe this is the famine that is coming. Um, do you have... Where's my phone? I don't know where your phone is. Um, so I think that Nicole's going to look that up real quick. And, and it says also, do not harm the oil and the wine. Um, what do you guys make of that? Uh, so basically, so the, the guy who is making, maybe that's the guy he makes, like, he makes the scales go up, maybe, like, the price go up. Maybe that's his thing. Like, he, maybe his scale is, like, weighing out, like, food, and he, just, like, weighs it up more. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why the, 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 oil, the oil and the wine would not be harmed. I don't, I don't know what that would be. Maybe it's, like, Yaw's pure thing, like. So a denarius, it says a whole day's wage. Okay, so a whole day's wage. But how much is a um, how much and is a three measure? Three quarts of barley for a denarius. Three quarts. Yep. Barley. Yep. So hold on, three quarts. How much is a quart? Of course, not very much. A quart is. And are we talking ground barley, or are we just talking barley seeds? Probably barley seeds. Because you get more ground barley right. in a quarter. So we're looking, we're looking here, guys. We're trying to figure this out exactly how much that is. It doesn't sound like very much at all. How much is it? So I think two cups is a quart. Two cups is a quart? Okay, and so that we, we're looking at it. It does not look like very much. And so um, so essentially you get half of a, two cups, basically two cups of, of seeds, and it probably isn't um, ground up. So that's, that's not a tr tremendous amount. So, and the oil in the thing has a reference to kings. Okay, well, kings what? Um, Ouch. Thanks, Kate, for helping me with the cave. Second Kings 625. Okay, Second Kings, what is 625. it? 625. Second Kings 625. All right, so 625 says this. And there shall be a great famine in Shomeron, and behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for four score pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cab of a dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Fourth part of a of a cab of a dove's dung. Why are they eating dung? Because I guess they're, they're real hungry. Eat. They're real, real hungry. Um, so I guess you can eat and stay alive on the poop of a bird or something. I don't know. But I wouldn't recommend it. Yes. Yeah, so is there anything else in that Second Kings hey, six twenty five? Hey. No. Okay. So let's go back here. Let's go back into this. So okay, essentially, what I, is? I was wrong. What is it? A quart is four cups. Four cups. So, uh, so we have four cups. So an entire day's wage. How much would that make, though? If you if you have four cups of seeds of barley and you grind that into, um, can you make a loaf of bread from that? Oh, easily. You can easily make a loaf of bread from this. Because this is eight cups. So okay. So you get four of, so two of these, right? Because it said four, four quarts. No, it says a quart. No, what are you talking here? Yeah, was it just one quart? Yeah, a measure of wheat for a denarius and three measures of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. So it's 12 cups. So let's look real quick. Revelation 6 and verse 6. Yeah, and so a measure of wheat for a denar and three measures of barley for a denarius. Yeah, so it's... So it's three, so it's 12 cups. 12 cups? Yeah. That doesn't sound like a famine to me. I mean, it doesn't sound like if you can make a loaf of bread on a day's wage, you're still going to survive. I mean, if you well, did, maybe unless they have to feed their family, the whole tribe of families. Well, that, that would be true. That would that would very much. Be true. Like, like, so let's get this right again. Let's let's. So one more time, tell me how much is a uh, how much is this? A quart is four cups. A quart is four cups, and how much is it? We're supposed to get on this. How, Twelve. Twelve cups. How do we know this? Twelve cups. Three quarts, right? 
It didn't say three quarts. Three or did it say three, three quarts? It didn't say anything about quart at all. three major, but like I think for three about... majors. And how much is a measure? A measure is a quart. Are we, how do we know this? Because mine says a quart of wheat for a denarius. Okay, a quart of wheat for a denarius. So that's four four cups. Right. Of wheat for a denarius. Okay. And three quarts of barley <laughs> for a denarius. Okay, hold on, guys. Um, okay. So that's 12 cups. And then, so 16 cups of flour, basically, if that's So this doesn't sound like a famine to me. I mean, I, I know this is supposed to be a, a famine in this, but there must be something else to this, or we have our measurements or something completely wrong. Um, okay, yeah, so we don't know, folks. So we will continue on here, and this is um, some insight in how our family operates, <laughs> sometimes dysfunctionally. Seven. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. And I looked and saw a pale horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and the grave followed with him, and authority was given to hit them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and by beasts, by the beasts of the earth. It sounds like a spirits to me. It sounds like these are spirits. These guys are like spirits. Yeah, these, these are, are, are messengers or something. These are spirits or something. But when this guy, this one Death on the pale horse is killing everyone with hunger, I got to go back and think that somehow we're missing the um, I, I th measurements. I, I think a denarius doesn't translate right. I don't think yeah. it can be a quart. I don't, I don't think it's anything like this. I think it's really small. I mean, if yeah, you're I able can. to make a loaf of bread, even for one family, if you can make a loaf of bread, you're still going to be able to survive, right? You're not going to be like completely full, but if you can get a loaf of bread every single day, then you should have something. But that doesn't account for rent. It doesn't account for anything else that you have as well. So let's continue on. Let's see. And uh, nine. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the beings of those having been slain for the word of Yahuwah and for the witnesses which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Adonai, Kodesh and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Okay, so they popped the fifth seal open. So I feel like this thing here is uh, said under the altar. These are crowd under the altar. So I feel like under this altar in the Shamayim, that you, you can see Sheol. So, so when he opened the fifth, let's read that. I saw under the altar the beings of those having been slain for the word of God. It could also be they're, they're, these people are worshiping around the altar as well, right? I don't feel like these people have made it to heaven yet. No? I don't think so. Okay. Well, they're, I mean, they're, they're, how are they communicating? I mean, because Yaakov heard, heard Habel cry out from Sheol. That's interesting. Kate, do you have anything? No. Okay. And um, they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Adonai, Kodesh and true, until you judge and avenge our blood and those who dwell in the earth? 11. And there was given to each one a white robe, and they were told that they should rest a little long, while longer until both their fellow servants and their brothers, who would be killed as they were, reached completion. So they're resting. I think they're in Sheol because they're resting in Sheol, I think. Right. I think if they were Shemaim, they'd be doing something besides resting. Maybe. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Um, that's an interesting thing. Nicole, do you have something? So, back, I was looking to see what a major barley in the Bible is. And mm -hmm. it says an ephah, which translates to 10 omers worth. That's a lot, though. I remember. So, an ephah is 23.3 quarts. Yeah. So... I don't think that's right. I think that's too I, much. I, yeah, that's there's. These dudes are not starting. This is not. This is not famine. We're we're true. definitely doing this wrong. Maybe brother Glenn can can help us out on this. We, we obviously are not skilled in in the end times understanding. Okay. Um. So the thing was, these people, these people on the fifth seal, they were slain for the word of Yahuwah. Now, what does it mean to be slain for the word of Yahuwah? Does that mean sitting there eating your pork, worshiping on a Sunday, thinking that you're going to make it? So I think these people were killed because they refused to accept the, the whatever. They said they chose Yahuwah over whatever they were try trying to be forced upon them. Yeah, and they, they were killed. They were killed for the word of Yahuwah. The word of Yahuwah is the Torah. The Torah is our instruction guide. That is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's five books that we have there. And so I'm sorry again. Um, that was actually because we didn't get dog food out of the oven again last night. But I won't tell you guys the reasons why. Okay. Now, let's continue on on this. And um, what do you guys make of this? Everybody has to die, right? There's no. This doesn't look like a rapture to me. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like everyone... See, the, the people think there's a rapture, but it doesn't seem like people who do not get out alive. 
Yeah, and it very well clear. I mean, how long is how long, O Adonai and Kadesh, and true until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each one a white robe, and they were told that they should rest a little while longer until both their fellow servants and their brothers who would be killed as they were reached completion. Okay, that doesn't sound like a um, peaceful ending. That's not a rapture. That's not a rapture. That's not getting out of this stuff alive. That is not none of this. And so I guess the Christians fail to even read Revelations. They fail to read the New Testament. They fail to read the Old Testament. Um, the religion is, is a complete joke. Christianity is a joke. It, it, when you read scriptures, you will understand what I'm saying. And I don't mean disrespect by it, but it is a complete joke. It is a religion of Hasatan. Okay, 12. And I looked when he opened the sixth seal and saw a great earthquake came to be. And the sun became black as sackcloth as hold on and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood so it seems like things are happening to the earth now every yeah time, every time it was in the seal something worse happens yeah so the sixth seal so basically the first uh five seals the world starves away and they start dying right. and you know we can't here on youtube and you know other platforms we really can't say anything you can't it's obvious what's going on right now it started in the year 2019 and it has continued on it has been a ruse that we have all been under that we cannot say anything about. And um, that's coming. And there is an orchestrated famine. And there is. And they, they all these wicked demons and Satanists, they're, they come out there in their little warlock outfits and they say, we're going to eat the bugs and we're going to be happy. They, they say there's a famine coming and there's not going to be food. Um, they've been planning this famine for a long time. When the events of 2019 happened... This all was part of it. And then they shut off food production as well as everything else. And they never brought back a tremendous amount of it. And if you're in the United States, the reports in the United States are that food is, there's, the shelves are empty. The food is off the charts. Um, it's hard to get stuff. And I know that's probably not all of the U.S., but I'll tell you, there's something funny going on with first world countries. And I'm not saying that anything's not happening to third world countries because it's, it's definitely, they are. But where you guys are paying $10 for a pound of hamburger right now, down here in South America, we still pay two bucks for it. It has never gone up. You guys don't have eggs and eggs are like five and six dollars for a dozen. It has, there's nothing down here that you would not know of any kind of the same effects that is happening up in North America. So it is a destruction of North America by, you could just watch it as it goes down. So it's coming. All of this stuff in Revelations, it is coming. We all need to be very, very, very aware of what is coming because we have been told the same that Joseph was told that they would not have food for seven years. And if he had not taken care of himself and his and the, the Mitzrayim people and his family, they would all be dead. We would not be reading this right now. Okay, 13. And the stars of the Shemaim fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its unripe figs being shaken by a strong wind. Okay, so this is in the future, right? Because so we, we it's like stars fall and there's strong winds, earthquakes, and the sun becomes. Yeah, warm. and we we have not seen star. We we see a star fall every once in a while. You'll be out there, you'll gaze at the stars, and you'll see one flying across. But as far as them falling to the to our ground like fig tree with unripe figs. Uh, we haven't seen that yet. It's going to be like a meteor shower with stars. Meteor shower, yeah, and all sorts of stuff. There's going to be who knows, and I mean, you're, who knows what that's going to look like? But we have not seen that yet. Fourteen, and the Shemaim departed like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Okay, we've we've seen this before, right? We've talked we've talked about this before. We know that the mountains are going to be made flat, and there's going to be a mountain that's going to rise up, which is Mount Zion where we are, our Messiah is going to be, where he is going to be reigning from, where we hopefully will get called as our second exodus, that we'll get the heck out of this um, cesspool of, of demonic activity that we all unfortunately are stuck in. Okay, 15. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to that. It says this, the Shemaim departed like a scroll. What do you guys think that looks like? I don't know. How does a think. scroll look like? Yeah, it rolls down. Just, just roll it up, right? just roll up and roll away? Yeah, who knows what's going to happen. I, I think this is John ending. I think the thing is he was leaving uh, his vision of Shemayim and now seeing Earth. So that's why like, he's a person, like a scroll made, like, like, kind of like, he like zoomed out or something. Yeah, maybe. All right, 15. 
and the sovereigns of the earth and the great ones and the rich ones and the commanders and the mighty and every slave and every free one hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him sitting on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb because the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. Okay, now um, you guys, you guys probably don't know this um, gentleman here, but um, the people, Brother Glenn would definitely know this. And military people would know this. So the military, um, like especially in Colorado, like, like there are mountains inside of Colorado that are military bunkers that go way down in the ground. Like the entire mountain is up there, and they have like created entire villages and civilizations and things inside of these mountains. Um, and you will hear all of the. Um, the doomsday are saying, oh, we got to get the underground bunkers. You guys have the underground bunkers. And so you have all these rich elites and everybody's got these underground bunkers. Everybody lives in the side of a cave. Everybody thinks that they're going to be able to withstand the wrath of Elohim and his son when that comes. And it's, it's going to be a, a sad day for them. And, um, you know, all of these little mountains, they're all going to get, this is going to be their burial, right? All these mountains that they're all squirreled up into. Everybody that's all like thinking they're going to, um, see the end of the world and, and see that, uh, you know, watch our creator, you know, get defeated. It's not going to happen. This will become their graves for them. This will become their you really um, can't tombs. Hide, you really can't hide in Yahuwah's creation the mountain. He can definitely see you there. Yeah, absolutely not. Just like Adam when he um, he's trying to hide from Yah after he went and, you know, ate the, ate the fruit. You can't do it. You can't hide from y'all. Okay, so that is it, everybody. Thank you guys very, very much. Much love to everybody out there. We appreciate you guys watching this and in the in the future. We hope that you guys will seek the creator where he's able to be found. He is able to be found in the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He's not able to be found in a man-made church or, or a temple or anything of the sort. He is in the your heart, if you will bring him into your heart. And the only way that that is even possible is by beginning the walk of obedience. And if you guys do not begin the walk of obedience, then you will be like every other Christian out there and the 65,000 other denominations out there that all think that they're saved. Once saved, always saved. And that is always a myth from the hands of Satan. Okay, thank you guys very much. Have a good day.